gonna get us live here uh, on our Zoom. All right. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to another Chat and Learn here with Power to Fly. Uh, my name is Mariella and I'm just super excited to jump into this next hour. Um, I had a chance to speak with our guest speaker offline um, and I, 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 I feel like this is such an important topic, especially now, and she was just kind of going over some beautiful things that her current clients are talking about, especially during these times. So I really wanna maximize this next hour so that you all can pop off of mute uh, because I have muted everyone upon entrance just to go over some housekeeping rules so we can really maximize this time. But I cannot stress enough, I wanna hear your voice. Please come off of mute, turn your cameras on if you feel inclined to do so, put a virtual backdrop. It doesn't matter if you haven't showered, no judgment here. Um, so we don't want you to just kind of press play and watch. We want you to participate. So please use the chat box. I see some of you all turning your cameras on. Hello. Um, and then if anyone wants to, because I know we'll be talking about some sensitive topics. If you want to keep anything anonymous, find me in the chat box under Mariella and write to me anonymously and I'll flag that to our guest speaker. Um, with that being said, uh, this is being recorded. So I, I invite everyone to be present. I know we live in a world where we multi multitask all the time, but you can rewatch this recording on Power to Fly and then you can take notes there. So I would really value your presence. Um, and then you can rewatch this later. Um, all right, so the last thing I'll say is follow us on socials because we got some great chats lined up in the future. Um, and I'm just gonna pass the mic here to our beautiful guest speaker today, who's from Washington State, but she's currently in Michigan. Hala, let us know a little bit about yourself, how you came to know about Power to Fly and what you're excited to share with us today. Thank you, I'm honored to be here and thanks everyone to actually taking the time and being here. Um, a little bit about me, it's, it's constantly changing, but my current way of I'd like to kind of dive into it is a, I'm a body positive anti-dieting nutritionist. Uh, that kind of has a different multi-factor piece to it. And that becomes from my background in human biology and nutrition. So I, throughout the past 18 years that I have been working with clients, that's just where I am today. And we're going to go over some of that details today with the questions. Um, I actually, and by uh, very good luck, got connected to Power to Fly through a really good, I call her my right hand because so many years ago, um, her and I got to know each other through um, being at work and working together as a client. And then she just made my life so much better. And as I was transitioning, uh, she said, Hala, I think you should meet this gr in incredible group of individuals that have such a versatile topics to talk about, but all of them come together because they want to support each other. So I was fascinated. I think it's kind of the rabbit hole for two seconds. I started watching some of the videos and I think five hours went by and I didn't know like, oh, whoops. So I am definitely hooked, but I'm honored to actually be sitting on the other side and being able to um, kind of share some of the things that I have spent majority of my life figuring out and then see it in my clients to the table hopefully taking some load off of everybody's back because particularly this year, I think the complication around what we know, what we want, how our body feels has gone to a different level. And I'm hoping to kind of take the stress out of it. And I love that you're here because we often are talking about how to essentially, if I could wrap up a lot of the conversations that I've had over time with, with working at Power to Fly uh, is, how do I connect my mind with my body, essentially, with my heart, with my compassion, with my emotional intelligence, with my like intuition, with my respect for myself, all these things to get, whether it be negotiate, you know, a higher salary or whatever, all of these great topics. Um, and if I could just kind of melt it down into something that I, I feel like you're definitely going to touch on today is how to be more in our bodies and, and kind of get out of our minds a little bit and just to allow that that uh, more of a cyclical understanding of, of ourselves in the world from a holistic perspective, which is so needed uh, in, in the working world and especially in technology because we're all in the mind programming, you know, trying to manage teams, trying to like, you know, stick to our Google calendars and we often leave mm -hmm. ourselves behind. So Hala, thank you so much in advance. Um, mm -hmm. and. You all have submitted some great questions offline. We are gonna take this time to just put every question on the screen um, one by one. Uh, and, and I just wanna also shout out where we're calling from. So I'm calling from Argentina. I mentioned that Hala is calling from Michigan. We've got some folks in Hawaii, Argentina, Washington State again, and in, in oh, excuse me, England, London, England. Uh, if you're joining us now, feel free to write in the chat box uh, where you're calling from. And then I'll also say, feel free to use this time to 
write anything specific about your journey uh, that I can bring up to our, our guest speaker so she can dive in deep with these questions um, and really, you know, throw out some, some lifelines today. Uh, and then maybe you can connect with her offline uh, when we finish this chat. So we're going to take these questions one by one. Also, Hala's got her, her companion there with her now. So they might be making, no, it's perfectly fine. We're at home with our pets and with our kids. So this is the new normal, actually. She's partially a nutritionist as well, but I, we had a talk and hopefully that's the last time she sends her opinion into the public. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so Hala, let's jump into this first question. If this is your question and you're joining us live, feel free to come off of mute, write in the chat box. If this is not your question and you want to add your two cents or you want to talk about a dream you had last night, I cannot stress enough, I want to hear from you. Okay, so how can I set healthy and reasonable fitness and nutrition goals when I'm trying to feel good in my body, not hit a specific weight or clothing size. I feel like proceeding without goals means I'm far less likely to make or stick to any changes. I love this. Actually, there's not a question I don't love, but I think this is such a fundamental question. So um, I'll bring in a little bit of a, um, what's it called, background into the answering this question. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest pieces is um, all of us, regardless of what we're doing, when you're going to tackle a new thing, whether it's a shoe, clothes, pen, work, if you have a little bit of plan of action, you can always go in with a little bit better grounding. You're going to hear me. I, I, I like to use the word grounding just because we are such multitaskers these days that when we think about goal setting, we think about multiple goals. And sometimes it is really important to actually realize, yes, yet things might be separate, but if I, if I target one, then when I successfully go to the next, the, the overall projection of my success in what I'm doing is going to increase. So this is something that I actually see, and it's very true in my life. Um, I love the fact that this is not, uh, I mean, not to say, it's not necessarily hinged on, I need to get into that close by April, or I need to feel, you know, uh, weight going up or low by the certain time. But what I learned is to actually breaking it down to small pieces. Body is a phenomenal machine. It actually likes to work with the rhythm that it moves it forward. Um, you know, I, I'm, I sit here with three big major health crises that actually brought me to where I am today. And I think all of us have questions or might be living in that body. However, um, even in the state of dis-ease, which is disease, the body thinks that it's moving us harmoniously. So when we're proposing, what are some of the goals? What are some of the things? And, and I kind of emphasize on the word healthy because healthy is very different for everyone. Healthy, healthy for someone who is in, in a no condition, a completely good health for someone who is, um, they have an autoimmune disorder, completely look different. And I can't give you the same answer, but Breaking it down to first chewable size, sizable chewable um, goals. And then remembering that the method that you're going to put, I always say, we resemble bookcases. You first have to have a very solid bookcase of a background, then start buying the books that you want to put in it. So if, if I were to answer this one and say, let's, let's look at, let's actually take an inventory of what your today's routine with food and fitness look like. Let's actually write it down and see from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to sleep, what are some of the things that happens four or five times per week? So we can call it more of a routine. Then let's look at it and see when or what times do they happen? Let's find the gaps between it. And those pieces can actually tell us you might be very much closer to your nutrition goal versus your fitness goal, or you might be actually all over the place. Finding whether you have a routine or not, and particularly this came really handy during the time, the first three months of quarantine, and then now into nine months of the year, is what does your day look like? So therefore, we can actually pick a goal. For instance, I'll bring an example. One of the things I am such a stickler to is um, when you're eating and the gaps between it. One of my master's degrees is about um, uh, regulation of blood sugar, which leads into so many different things, such as diabetes, energy, inflammation, autoimmune disorder. So when you're writing that down to kind of target your nutrition, nutrition has so many facets. It's the when you eat it, 
what you're eating and how are you feeding yourself? First thing I would teach you is make sure when you're looking those gaps that you are allowing at least three to three and a half hours of you know, distance between the last time you ate and the next time you're going to eat. Again, there is exception to the rules. And let's, let's see if you have a flow. I have a client that I, I have multiple clients, but a client that I love when I first got to know her, she would wake up, she would shower, she would work out, and then she might have a cup of coffee. And at noon, she would have a phenomenal lunch. But again, whatever noon time happened, then nine o'clock was the next time she was eating. She was struggling quite a bit with energy and certain things like mental cognition or memory. She was working out really nicely at the time that I was working out with her. But one of the biggest hurdles in her goal setting was her nutrition was so off that her body wasn't actually fueling itself. So we kind of came in and looked at and moved things around. So I have to talk to everyone individually, but the piece that works for almost everyone is when are your eating times? Are you eating too close? Are you eating too far? Because yes, there's carbohydrates and protein and fat comes into each meal. But if your meal, complex or not, too close to each other or too far, the body decides I'm going to take charge and actually takes away the energy. So whatever nutrition goal that you have, make sure the backbone is set. Exercise. One of the things, exercise and fitness, and I always kind of couple it and say movement. Um, I used to train triathlons and, and marathon runners and kind of like heavy duty athletes that I would not be able to keep up with them at any day or piece. But they had a season of a lot of movement and a season of no movement. Then throughout the years, like I actually have a sedentary job. If I were to get up and start pacing in front of each of my clients, that's crazy making. Some days I'm actually really chair bound and I have to be mindful. So fitness, exercise are both movement. Movement throughout the day actually has a very valid point. I would say anytime you can get up and move your body, that's great. But if you're thinking about fitness as designating a time to do a certain thing in it, remember, not only you kind of coordinate it with your eating, there's certain times of the day, depending on who you are, your fitness level or workout routine or movement could be going against you as far as giving you a healthy momentum and something that would move your body forward. Um, good example that I can give. Another client of mine, she was a one meal a day person just because she was in sales and there's high demand. She would always have snacks, but as far as the meal goes, she always had one. And I promise I have many male client experiences too, but this is just what pops into my head. Um, she actually was doing her workout right after she was um, getting off work. And sometimes that meant she just ate and went to a workout. Sometimes it meant she still had nothing in her system and would work out. For her, movement or fitness towards the end of the day kind of coincided with really high stress levels. I always remind individuals, movement creates resistance. Resistance would feed into your cortisol. So if you haven't had a supportive food day, if you haven't slept well and you worked a ton and you're going to go spend 45 minutes without fueling in at the gym or outside, I actually advise you against it because you just now put your body in a higher state of anxiety and lower state of energy uptake. So why do I keep going back between this? Once you set your backbone and you're able to actually visibly see when you're eating, then you find pockets where your fitness comes in. And fitness at the beginning, if, if you're very, um, if, if you're trained and you are moving every day, for you, that looks something different. For individuals that are thinking about this is my movement, this is, this is when I want to start. I have really never stuck to a particular rhythm or motion. Start with, well, if you're in Washington, Oregon, or California, please don't go out yet. But start with just simply moving your body, go for a walk, you have stairs, if you don't have knee issues, go up and down. Um, when we were in quarantine, and we couldn't go out, I would say, purposely pace around your house, not just doing the laundry and folding things, get oxygen moving into your body. And 
that really creates, this is another analogy that I like to bring. Does, I mean, this is silly. This is like a second grade. I always say, do you know why there is no fire in space? The question why? is, or the, the answer is there's no oxygen. <laughs> So <laughs> I wanted to entertain. It's not a silly question. Bring it up because I love, then you, you really, it's like, we make things really complicated. Essentially, I'm just going to interject a little bit. Um, if you don't mind, I love that. No, you no, are, please. Yes. I love that. Okay. So I love the, the image of the bookshelf because what is filling that up, the skeleton that you're so beautifully uh, presenting us with is, is information essentially. Right. And what story. And so I'm just, cause my mind gets really creative and I'm like, okay, so what stories are filling up my bookshelves? And then like, what books don't I want on my bookshelf? Or like, you know, you, it's a different kind of, you know, learning environment or entertainment space uh, based on what's there. So I love thinking of it that way. Cause it also takes out some of this like really simple yet complex, um, you know, energy that we give to it. Uh, I see some folks nodding and smiling as well. So I, I'm sorry about that. I just needed to, to interject, but uh, I'd love to pass the mic back to you so you can continue. We've got some folks writing in the chat box. I just want to flag. Um, so we've got uh, Talia saying, that's my issue. I notice I'm not moving enough, sometimes not at all in those pockets of time. Um, and then we've got someone else on the line uh, as far as nutrition info, info that says I have celiac disease. So just if you can consider those, those perspectives for now. And if you're on the call Absolutely. now, Feel free to continue writing in the chat box some things about yourself so we can dive into these, these topics. Okay, so continue. No, I love it. And actually, that's a really good, I'm so glad. This, this question is very, it's, for the lack of a better word, it's very juicy and meaty. But it's such a big topic that I'd like you to at least learn your very grounding part. So being able to see it as a progress as a, as a piece that you can, a puzzle that you can move all the time and you continue to be, you know, successful in the goal that you're setting. I love that it resonated with you. I swear, I should have at some point maybe taught kindergarten, though kids and I don't get along. I love them. They love me, but one of us will always cry. So if the analogy is sticking with you, I'm really glad because those are the pieces. I can bring a lot of jargon. I promise I have had many publications, but this is the, this is very valuable to me. Thank you for saying that. So uh, Talia, the thing that you actually said, I, I brought that analogy. I said, why do we not have fire in this space is there's no oxygen. We sometimes get so bogged down because so much information comes in and say, we have to move 20 minutes for it to be beneficial. We have to do a workout 40 minutes that would be uh, into, you know, uh, solid and beneficial. Remember, on planet Earth, every time you move intentionally, whether it's high intensity, low intensity, but intentionally. So you put other things out, you incorporate oxygen into your digestive system. Our digestive system requires oxygen as a part of burning that, I kind of look at our stomach and I always say, pretend that it's a furnace. You bring the food, which is the log, you have the material, like you, you have a stomach and you have esophagus and all those things. So you have the foundation when you incorporate movement, even if it's 10 minutes, but you know, 10 minutes every day or 10 minutes a couple of times a day, you incorporate that oxygen and all of a sudden the body starts responding differently. A lot of us, and this is another separate question, a lot of us, even when we sit, we don't properly breathe. That very, very, very much affect our digestive system. This is something I have to actually remind myself every single day. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, going back to breath. I mean, I, I'm just going to hold it here for a minute because I love that uh, the, first of all, we, we will not exist without breath. We will, we, will, we will go on to the next experience. So it's essential to, to include that into how we understand ourselves. And I love that you're bringing uh, this um, awareness essentially into this, this beautiful organism that we have that you know, maybe we, we're, we're overworking ourselves with our mental work and we're kind of putting this uh, to the side, but something as simple as breath and how are we using our breath? Uh, so I studied performance theater and I studied film. And one of the things that I love about what I studied, sometimes we'd be on the floor for like and the whole class and I'd be like, I'm paying to, to learn this, you know, like am I, am I spending my money in a good way or not? Um, like this is what I'm learning is how to breathe. And I'm like, as an adult now, I'm so thankful for that because I see so many people struggle with it. So now 
essentially it affects how you speak, your presence, your voice extends from just your physical voice. And of course your mental voice is a whole nother story where you're telling yourself what you're getting in, what you're basically eating uh, and, and feeding yourself. Um, and so what I realized is that what a, a one test that I love doing um, as far as, you know, finding, helping the person find where their breath is coming from is to put, place their hand on their chest and on their belly. And just without, you know, closing their eyes and letting them get lost in their breath and asking which hand moved the most. And if the answer is that your chest is moving more than your tummy, it's be, that's survival breath. And our bodies are, like you said, intelligent beings. You, we shouldn't be breathing from this survival breath when we're sitting down or when we're, you know, not being pushed into the ocean or something like that. And we need that, you know, high influence oxygen to help defend ourselves. We should bring the, the breath to our belly. And, and, and I love that you're bringing that into the way that we are nourishing ourselves and seeing this as a furnace. Uh, one, of the, one of the questions I have for you is, um, because you are from the States, uh, how has Western or you know, non-Western uh, holistic practices uh, influenced your work? Because I automatically think of like um, the, the chakra of, of, you know, you said fire and just how this is the solar plexus, if I think of like Eastern uh, mythologies, but I'd love for you to speak a little bit about that. I love that you asked that. This is so interesting. Um, so I have been very fortunate to um, incorporate, I actually, um, I certify in uh, Chinese traditional medicine, nutrition side and Ayurvedic medicine. The reason for it is I'm very, very Western medicine educated, but there's just some things that we cannot answer quite a bit. So I, I really always feel like in a right integration, all of that comes together. So the reason you said the breath was beautiful, you said it, it actually reminded me of, um, people that are in Hawaii, the, the word ha, H-A, that means breath of life. When we're talking about breathing, it's simple to talk about like fitness or think about, yes, I do need oxygen. Without it, I don't go further. I kind of, I'll, I'll add a little geeky piece. And if I go overboard, just stop me. But I like for everyone to kind of absorb this for a minute and sit with it. You said, actually, last year, two months earlier, I got into a car accident that's supposed to be nothing. And it actually completely changed my entire um, life. I'm, I'm actually very healthy now, but it took a long time. My breath for about eight months was stuck in my chest. So therefore, when you stay longer than, and actually two minutes is even too long, st long periods of time when your breath st stays in your chest, you biologically produce higher amounts of cortisol, which is one of the most strongest uh, stress hormone in your body. So it's not so just from the experience of being human that taking a deeper breath, and there's so many different good modalities that you know, uh, Qigong, Tai Chi teaches you, but also Ayurveda, Ayurveda and yoga teaches you, but, or just simply different, par like different parts of um, holistic centering yourself, teaching you breath. But truly and biologically, one of the biggest damages that we do to ourselves is when you are in that fight or flight section, when a bear attacks, your body doesn't stop to say, oh, I will, I'm a pescatarian currently, so don't quote me on it, but I will, I will go ahead and continue uh, digesting the salmon and asparagus while the black bear comes and eats me. At this point, the metabolism goes or digestive system goes, holy moly, we're in big trouble. Whatever the food is, we're just going to find the closet, put it in there, grab all the energy, pump the blood to the heart and extremities. We're going to get out of this situation. And I can't remember which one you run away, grizzly bear or black bear. But again, I have not had the privilege of being in front of either. So, but my point is, imagine even at the time that you're eating, I actually, this is a topic of any of my clients, you talk to them, they will tell you this. They, I say this till they throw up. When you're eating to sitting to eat or standing to eat, when the time comes to eat, majority of us are eating quickly or even when we're sitting down we are breath breathing from our chest which means we're activating our cortisol which means actively we are lowering our digestive system so i do a little trick because sometimes i don't really like i'm a i'm moving all the time i don't want to do a 15 minute breathing da, 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 da. I, I i just stand i sit i ground my feet and I actually just focus on four breaths. 
and I, I do the same thing because um, one of the people that saved me from last year, she actually helped me, held my hand around her rib cage and said, Holla, breathe and touch my body. And her lungs, her uh, rib cage went like this versus mine just stayed. It just didn't go anywhere. So checking, the goal is put your hand on your chest and put it on your belly, a little bit above your belly button. It doesn't really matter. Engage and see where the breath is coming from. Correct it with, if you need to take a deeper breath or count or drop your shoulders, do that. Whatever you do with that change, you increase the oxygen, you lower your cortisol, you engage your metabolism. So a couple of questions I, and I will try to figure out how to answer all these things that made it uh, available. But when we were talking about boredom snacking, it's not just boredom snacking, it's how we're breathing, boredom snacking and letting our body be. I love that you mentioned this because um, it's, it's so important to, as a part of function of the body, when you're starting your car, you never kind of question do I need to put gas in it? If yours electric, do you have charge in it? Do I, do I hold the wheel? There's certain things like, you know, you keep your eyes forward. You know, you're not going to be under the chair. You know, you're not going to be dancing all the time. Like there's certain, like if you're driving on ice, you make sure your tires are not flat X, Y, and Z. We have certain things. When you leave the house, you make sure your wallet is with you. When you are in a place of setting intention and goals for your body, whether it's movement or food, actually, even if you're going to work out, if you're breathing from your chest, you're still going to have a very, very crummy workout, crummy walk. And instead of allowing the body to relax and allow oxygen to come in, you're going to be a ball of stress. You come out of that place Please, I mean, people say, I don't know why after a workout, I really want a cookie. The cookie has done nothing. It's no bad or good. But yes, I know why you need a cookie because your stress hormone was so high. You worked out on top of it. Now the only energy that can be used is carbohydrate. You would have eaten a bread or pasta if it was close. So sorry to kind of bring it up, but this is like such a, it's kind of like a, a disco ball. Well, this question, you can put a lot of light into it and each section will represent a different question. But I'm hoping that at least when we're walking away from this, you notice the very least thing that you would do is one, figure out what you do with that pocket of time. Even if it's five minutes, kind of observe what your behavior towards yourself is. When do you feed yourself? When do you stop yourself? When do you sleep? Figure out that motion. And then when you're kind of setting a goal around something as it could be as simple as I'm just going to for five days eat at 9 a.m. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything bigger than that. And then when you sit, check, is my cortisol on? Is my cortisol off? And then proceed. This is kind of silly coming out of me, but it, this is the truth of me. Even if you're eating Twinkies at that point, no judgment if that's what you want to do. Make sure your digestive system is on because without it, really, it, the moral you can be eating the most wonderful food that is nourishing your body, still not going to go that far. Good. You know, what I'm reflecting on right now, I'm, thank you for sharing all of this. And I love that you call this a disco ball because that makes it a little more fun, a little more, you know, uh, communal. And it's not just this big, you know, taboo of, I don't know, uh, you know, our education system essentially that hasn't taught us how to be connected with our body and how to feed ourselves and work on nutrition and understand, you know, we don't need to be scientists to know how our body works. I mean, we're in our bodies every day. Um, that's like a personal complaint that I have about the education system in, in the States for public schools. So, uh, but just in general, like um, empowering yourself to know, I mean, one, one thing that, that sticks out to me is what anxiety how anxiety reveals itself. And oftentimes it's through the breath, right? So let's say that you're anxious and you're breathing this way and that makes you kind of, you know, forget to feed yourself. I mean, I have forgotten to feed myself sometimes. And that's like, what, how? Because I'm busy sticking to my Google calendar. My mother would be disappointed, you know, like then I got go through this whole thing in my head, but it's just like, it's, and I know that I'm not the only one. That's why I'm not afraid to say it. So it's like, what is, where are our priorities today in this really fast paced world where 
um, you know, food that has a lot of toxic things and is super cheap and then, you know, marginalized communities. And in order to feed yourself, you have to be in, in a certain mindset first, of course, and wherever you are in the world, your mindset first is always important. But let's say that you have, uh, you don't need, you don't have access or you don't make the time for yourself to take care of yourself, which leads you to have more anxiety, which kind of continues this snowball effect. I know I threw a lot your way as well. So feel free to yep. pick that one up. <laughs> I, I love it. I you you know, nothing is separate from a, I mean, I think our lives with what we do in it, how we nourish it, everything is a continuous entity. And I don't want to sound like someone I am not, I don't have an education or degree in quantum physics or, you know, uh, there's just, but matter continues. So this is so interesting that you would tell me. I can kind of, I, I second that with you. I had a privilege of living so many different parts of the world. And, you know, about 22 years ago, I landed in United States. So I'm actually familiar quite a bit. I grew up in, you know, Southern parts of Africa. And then I lived in different parts of Europe. I lived in Middle East before some parts of it before that there was anything there. I jokingly say in 10 minutes, you saw everything there was. And then now it's completely a different empire. So I had the privilege of actually because I didn't also speak English, um, you had to read body language and um, eat with everyone, which bonded you. So I totally agree with what you're saying. And I raise my hand because this is the misconception. I probably would fail myself if, if I believed in a word failure, I would fail myself four or five times per day. Even with the extensive years of, I, I don't think you could separate nutrition from me. And it has nothing to do with eat two grams of protein and have five milligrams of MG. I, I know all about that, but it goes beyond us. Um, I'm actually just, if I had a second set of life, I would do a couple of other degrees just to understand and bring them together. But thank God there are people that you can collaborate with. But my, the point was, even with the person who my mind is filled with this, exactly as you said, I am such crazy person about what I do that as a nutritionist, sometimes some of my clients know we have, and I say seafood, like you can see my food, like, Hey, just don't look in my mouth. I'm going to talk and eat because if I don't do that, and if I don't share that with you, I just simply won't do it. It's the, the thing that I really loved about this, the, the generalization of this question, which was also very specific is we all have things that we can maneuver in our daily basis to be a little bit kinder to ourselves. The person who sits here, sometimes working on, and all of us have different time zones, to accommodate somebody else in the time zone, it has been 10 p.m. that I'm up and I'm actually taking a client. But for me to do that, that just means shift your nap time, shift your sleep, shift your, shift your nap time, eat more solid food that is resonating with your body and actually, you know, go for a walk and stay hydrated because you're going, I'm a, I'm a very morning person, like wake me up at five o'clock. I'm perfectly fine. But after 10 o'clock, unless we're socializing and having a glass of wine, if you ask me anything, you might get a response that is not a written language or it's not discovered because my brain is a jumble, but that's the beauty of it. It's finding ways and pockets that works for us because I actually, one thing I wanted to say is that when I see the fit, fitness and nutrition goals in just any part of it is, we talked about cortisol. I actually take you one step back and I say, you know how we uh, charge our body, um, what's it called? Uh, not charge our body, charge our phones overnight. And we always say, if I don't charge this thing, it's tomorrow it comes, work happens and I need it. We plug our bodies into outlets. Sometimes that outlet is food, sometimes that outlet is movement, sometimes that outlet is sleep. Each of us make our biochemistry so diverse that we actually land where we wanna land. So I think you said it, Marielle, beautifully. Um, how, how do we find that time and not, and not to say I love my calendar, but how do we find time so that extensively our quality of life is better? Three times in my life, I really did not know if I'm going to be alive two months down the road. And I'm not joking. This is not a pity party, but I had to reevaluate and change my life to make sure that I'm getting the most, even if it's two months. Yet I'm sitting here in front of you today and sometimes I completely forget. So 
starting and reset. There is no, I always say every five, every minute after this is a reset time. And by reset time, meaning change that mindset. You don't need to start from a Monday. You don't need to start from a 12 o'clock. You can start from five minutes from now. I love, and this is, I, a lot of times I like organization. So I would say, I'll actually start doing that tomorrow. Um, last, Fe just the February that passed, I had to go through a very intensive um, protocol that changed everything. I remember sitting in front of the physician and there was just a list of things that I was not looking forward to do. And it worked at Ayurvedic medicine. This was the first time hands-on I really went to the belly of the beast. Um, and I said, I'll, I'll actually start Tuesday. And it would, this was like Sunday. And she said, absolutely not. I don't care what your day has been. It has begun now. Don't wait because you don't have the luxury and it's not because you expire, but all of these pieces we were talking about, body is a constant moving of a biochemistry. Anytime you in, enter that cycle, you actually support it to be better 10, 20, 15 minutes and days later. Sorry, I went on a tangent. No, please go on as many tangents as you want. I feel like we are just like writing down notes and, and I really appreciate you taking this kind of, you know, as you said, in the disco, disco ball manner. Um, I'm going to flag just a couple of questions here we've got in the chat box. So from Candice, we have, I get Instagram ads for supplements and vitamins all the time. How do you know what you actually need and which ones are not good for us, dangerous or a waste of money? I love that question. I'll smile, but I kind of keep that to myself. I, I get a lot of ads too. So rule of thumb, and this is a very generalistic rule of thumb. If you're not suffering from a disease, and this is actually coming from me, one of our um, uh, attendants have celiac disease, which means a ton of malabsorption for that individual. So maybe put that in a pocket. If you do not have a digest, if you don't have a lab report, or, a, or illness that would actually affect your absorption. If you are an alive, and I say healthy, meaning, you know, we all can check and say, yes, I'm a healthy individual. Supplements and minerals are lovely, but there's a time and place for it. If you're not having issue absorbing it through your food, it is honestly the best thing to consult with someone that you know they don't get a kickback from that supplement or they're not really gun happy about it. I tend to be a terrible, terrible, terrible person when it comes to supplements. Yes, I have used it. One of the things that I would throw out and kind of push my clients is omega-3s, but I specialize in inflammatory disorders. And whether you're vegan or vegetarian, you better have your omega-3s or else. But at the same time, I'm not going to send them to take like copious amount. However, the ads are really good. I remember, and then Sorry to say this, this is maybe generalizing it, but most of the time it's they're claiming health, but there's somewhere in the background they're claiming weight. And I think as individual women, and I, I, I mean, there's so many photos of me out there from in different phases of my life. I have been incredibly thin, like because I was sick and I have been incredible, as I like to say, this is my favorite word, fluffy. I was me in both or all bodies. Some, I was incredibly sick. Some, I was actually incredibly happy. Both of them had different pieces. And today, this is what I look like. I'm, my clients actually see me throughout months. I go, I'm kind of like a uh, chameleon. My, my body shifts and I try to land to where it is. But we all, whether we grew up in the United States or elsewhere, the, we have our subconscious have heard about weight. So my particular um, piece to this is be very mindful. If you're noticing that you have stomach pain, your nails are not growing, your hair is falling out, the top of your eyebrows are thinning, your lip is discolored, your skin is always you know, prickly and kind of goosebumpy, your fingers are cold. These are symptoms to pay attention. But I promise you, just jumping into a multivitamin or a multimineral, it would be the most expensive pee or poop that sometimes you're going to ever have. And I don't know. I mean, I know it's been quarantine, but I like to spend my money on other things. And that's why I have a dog. She thinks she should be the focus point of my income. But I mean, jokes aside is there is a time and place for it. There absolutely I have like with celiac disease, and I'm sure um, we can have our you know, input, direct input, 
when when you at the beginning you're diagnosed depending on what stage you are you're depleted from everything to wait to get that from food would be absolute disservice so sometimes you have to support it but then check the blood check other tests make sure that you need it those commercials are lovely but remember one of the biggest marketing tools is to get the woman subconsciously or men because i actually have a lot of client male clients that struggling without knowing with weight to kind of shift through that. So do ask yourself, am I just getting this? And with, with COVID, actually, one of the biggest questions was, do I need to go on multi uh, uh, vitamins and supplements? Vitamin D even, there was so, such a huge um, conversation around it. Yes, it's needed for your immune system, but ask, check. And actually you can email me and ask me, I don't get anything from it, but I love, love just giving you a feedback of where do you, where can you find out what do you need to even consider that. But if you're under 50 and have no big digestive issues, complications, your food will be absolutely sufficient as long as you can make it versatile. But if you have other um, health underlining issues, then yes, some of them you might benefit from. Sorry, again, I went very long on that. Please, please. I mean, we've got some folks here writing in the chat box. Um, and I love that you all are sharing information with each other and knowledge. Um, I just want to use this opportunity because we've got about 15, a little over 15 minutes left. For those of you who are live with us, uh, what I like to do on these chats is start to put things into practice. So if you are interested in connecting with any of the women and men uh, who are on the chat today, uh, feel free to uh, write your preferred way of connecting. Uh, in the chat box. And then maybe later on, uh, Nicole will drop in a, a Google Doc there for us to, to continue that so that you can connect and support each other. I see that you all are already answering each other's questions or, or being at least, you know, considerate of different stories. So I really appreciate that, by the way. Um, so I'm sure you've read this book, Women Who Run With Wolves by Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes. Okay, I, I, this, and if anyone has not read this, I was on the bus. I live in Buenos Aires, so you gotta like bring a friend on the bus. Otherwise, well, before COVID, obviously, ah, uh, in order to have like a companion, and I would be on the bus crying. Like this felt like a sacred text that I had never had a, a person speak to me this way of like reclaiming your body as a woman in this world that for you know, historically speaking, you have had to be smaller or have, have had to have been, you know, quiet or put a muzzle on or whatever because of societal stresses. Um, and so I love that you're speaking just about, you know, listening to your body essentially uh, and, and essentially, you know, not falling into these ads. What I find, especially, you know, interviewing a lot of tech folks and doing all of my uh, research. Uh, I'm so into you all know Harari these days because you know he's helping everyone see that we are essentially being manipulated through advertisement. And it's like, all right, essentially, I think someone wrote in the chat box about how pharma companies are behind some of these. And it's like, okay, yes, if in doubt, yes. And also, if you don't want to go conspiracy theory, it's like just turn it off for a while. Put your. I mean, I I actually. Hope no one works at Instagram on this call, but I deleted Instagram from my from my phone just to like you know have a moment to when I want to go I go you know I'll I'll upload it I'll do what I need to do and I'll get off because otherwise I don't need you selling me things <laughs> yes. and I say that knowing that uh, it is a big force in in today's um, business world so but at the same time you know from a personal level I mean I work in PR and marketing I know the power of it and I also know how it is. Uh, something that manipulates folks. So just bringing us back into our body and listening, you know, and, and asking what hurts or does anything hurt? And, I, and do I need this or not? Um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about uh, maybe some of these myths that, uh, that we have adopted. You've spoken about subconscious or unconscious. I love that you're tapping into that. I know we can have a whole chat about, you know, just that. But um, some of these stories or myths or fictions that we've seen over time through, for example, Hollywood or through, you know, advertising that uh, essentially, uh, you know, historically speaking as well, women have not owned the narrative of beauty and what the, what the uh, you know, how, how we can envision beauty in a more holistic way. So I just, I just love to pass the mic to you to, to speak a little bit about that. <laughs> No, thank you. I actually love that. And I, I would take hints too, because, you know, one brain doesn't do all of it. One of the biggest things that I, 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 I'm going to use the word pet peeve, but please don't be disappointed in me. But it is, it really 
I feel like if my heart had like it was a Lego and it could come out bleeding, this is one of my, the biggest things that hurts my body and my well, my soul and my body when I hear it is um, the notion of and actually I'm not against it. It's um, a lot, particularly in Hollywood, fasting is such a big topic. It's one of those that grabs you because anytime before you want to get on the red carpet, you fast and you, you know, um, like juice fast or water fast and this fast and that fast. And particularly because women should not have bellies, which is then if you don't have a belly and it's different, I mean, I would be working with diabetics. I would be the first one to say there is a belly and there is a belly. I have a belly, but my belly is also not causing extra production of insulin or causing my body not to be able to do different things. So I put myself in that category too. But so the bloating, the gas, the belly, the, the, the notion of how you lay down and how your body wants to be, I have never, even in my most fittest years, I always say I have one pack and one pack only. I never achieved the uh, six or seven or 10 pounds, but your intestine, your whole, your, so I think most of us are female on this chat. So here's your boob, here's your stomach, and it's actually slanted this way. Everything else underneath it is actually your intestines, your kidneys, your, your liver, your pancreas, all those other parts. They take place. Um, so the fact that women should not have belly, if you go down to Middle East, the belly dancers must have a belly. In India, belly is considered so sacred that you can show everything, but if you show belly, it's like that woman is, you know, you know, she's almost half naked. So different parts, but I, I think the westernized culture, we get this factor that um, our stomachs have to be really flat. That's one of the um, achievements as being attractive, successful, even health. Actually, my clients come in and say, I'm very unhealthy because I have a stomach. Because if you're healthy, you don't have a stomach. And if I do fasting, would it make it go away? And any time, any entire time, I will raise my hand and say, when you don't eat, guess what? At the beginning, your body is going to be suck itself in because you don't have anything in your other body to process. But if you continue, I promise you, in a couple of days, you're going to produce gases other than hunger. And then you will look six months pregnant because the body goes, then what the heck am I going to eat? I can't just live on celery juice, not to poo-poo celery juice. There is benefits to that, even though I'm not a medical medium. All that said, I think we have mistaken our nourishment with our well, I mean, I'm falling into that same part too, with our, I don't want to say worth, but I, our, our wealth of health. Health is so different. I have, I have, when I say body positive, a lot of individuals think, well, you are a five foot woman, you are fairly thin, and my legs are my, most of my height. So of course, I mean, you never had a hard time. Um, I will remind people that if you know me, you actually know I was in much higher weight line. I still was the same person, but people looked at me differently, except I remind everyone, same knowledge, same tenacity, same crazy language was inside. But what it hurts me is in the name of health, we take actions mostly as women to correct our self-value, to kind of encourage our place in life. And then we have health repercussions. What we do in our 20s and 30s, very much sometimes in 40s, 50s, and 60s, causes major health griefs that we will not be able to easily recover. Um, I'm not going to go to, I think that's a topic on its own, just where health is, but just same as that ads that you would say, there's so many things. I actually, I have to be, not I have to be, I like to be on Instagram, but for work, but every single ad, I think they have me flagged. I'm like, inappropriate, inappropriate, inappropriate. <laughs> It's, it's targeted to make you think, what else do I need? And I would actually bring it back and say, it is lovely when you look at yourself. Actually, one of my clients after seven years told me this was the year, Holla, for the first time, I have spent the most time by myself naked in front of the mirror. And she left. She's like, please don't look at me or you know, judge me. I'm, I'm, I mean it in a very decent way. And I loved it because this person... If you looked at her, she fit everything that our society says that it was, but she struggled and she did not have a, she, she had a body viewing issues, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything, it, most of us think about anorexia, but it was a lot of different pieces. She just wasn't comfortable in her own skin. 
And I think she actually made the month of May the best month for me because I saw her going through this progress. I know as a nutritionist, as a woman, many times for many years, I didn't have mirrors in my house. Not because I did not like mirrors, not because, I don't know actually, because I was actually terrified of being in front of the mirror and having to decide where I am and pick a judgment. Even at that point, my physician was telling me, Holly, if you just drop the cheeseburger and go for a run, nobody comes to see a nutritionist that is in higher weight. We're all affected. The person sitting in front of you is also affected, but every single day, every single hour, I actually choose to kind of separate my topic of health from what I think health is. And actually today, when I was before jumping on our call, I put a quick lunch together and I actually stated it so many times. My Instagram is about what's in my plate because people think that's, as a nutritionist, I must have a secret weapon. No, it's more of being true and actually tapping into Today, I really, really, really needed high amount of protein. I ate as much as if somebody else was out there, a man should eat. I'm a woman. I don't see why a man and a woman should eat differently. I ate for my body. I ate for what I needed and I actually showed up with the brain and a topic of health versus worrying about if I'm sitting here, is my stomach sticking out? Can you guys see? That's what I'm trying to actually say. And you know what? No, my stomach is sticking out and it's perfectly okay. So I, I mentioned earlier that during my studies in, in at university, uh, I remember in order, and, and I love my professor for saying this, like, you cannot suck your bellies in. If you're going to perform and if you want to like be authentic, you have to release your belly. And that, and how it was like, duh, but then also people needed to hear it. And in that way, and to like ground yourself and root yourself and just kind of get out of this mentality of, you know, fitting into a certain uh, societal structure, essentially. I see folks writing that as well, that societal uh, constructs are dangerous for so many, especially where women and weight are concerned. Absolutely. Um, so I've got another question here. Is it okay or is it good to obey cravings sometimes? I'll make this quick because I know my time is on our mind. So I will change the structure of that sentence. Cravings are always a signal from the body. The 15th cookie that you bought from a 7-Eleven is not a sign of anything other than we actually need to look at your nutrition. There's something else that is missing, but don't think of it as obey. I made a post and I actually did that. We often feel like cravings are such a taboo. When kind of going back to the beginning of our conversation, I know it can be a yes or no answer, but hear me out. Go back and again, look at the backbone of your body. You might be surprised to see what you re you're referring to as a craving it might be actually a little bit of signal or a text message from your body needing a particular thing. I had a cookie that I made. It was semi-terrible, but I made it because I was determined to make it after with my meal. That was totally a craving. Was that bad? No. Was that good? No. It was just a fueling. And I actually know why I want the chocolate. Too much information, but I'm close to a particular part of my month. And zinc is something that my body needed. And I can tell you that I have not had any zinc. And it took me, you know, almost four decades to figure that out. So don't think about as obeying. Figure out first where that craving is coming from. If it's a part of what you're missing and it fits into that backbone of schedule, then absolutely and don't think you're obeying it. It's doing you a favor by telling you need it. But if it's something that is constantly happening and in form of a bucket of ice cream, let's figure out what else your body needs because this is a sign and symptoms of a deficit. Your body needs something else. So be kind, but I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, but to be continued. Yes, I love that. I love that so much. So much to talk about. We've only got about four minutes left. So what I want to do is I want to see if anyone on the line wants to take themselves off of mute uh, and jump in with the question. And then Hala, I just ask for you to leave us with some food for thought. I always say that and it makes so much sense on this chat. Yes, <laughs> Leave us with some food for thought and like, let us know how we can connect with you uh, on socials or via email, website, whatever you want. So anyone on so the line nice. wants to take themselves off of mute now, hold for a light pause and see. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. 
Okay, well, if not, you can write in the chat box. Holla, take us away with some food for thought. And if there's any question that we didn't get to that you want to highlight now, you, of course, you can approach that as well. Uh, I'll, so I'll highlight that. I'll try to get, I know there were so many questions. I'll try to do my very best and somehow get more of these answers to you. But I'd leave you with this one question. Think about rhythm. And don't, the biggest thing that drives our machine of the body and gives us harmony is some sort of rhythm. So today, really go and look at your backbone. Even if two or four days out of the week have a rhythm, really try to harness that energy. When you're playing a music and individuals that play a music or do a dance routine, always know that if you have a routine, even if you forget a step, it will take you back and you easily fall into the moment that you need to be. So find that routine, allow the body to actually glide through the day other than the hiccups. So when the hiccups come in, it actually has a back um, feedback, not a feedback, fallback plan. It will fall into the rhythm. That's the most important part. I spend my days talking about this. Rhythm is the main thing that nobody has taught us, but you're the only one in your body can actually define it. And if you wanted to connect with me, I am very bad with social media, very bad meaning I don't have 15,000 things. I do have an Instagram. You can uh, look me up under Honu Nutrition. My website is actually the word Honu means sea turtle in Hawaiian uh, language. And if you ever know this about um, sea um, sailing and navigation, sea turtles are one of the creatures that you can leave them anywhere in the world and they will always find their birthplace. So I actually say our health we are intelligent machines. Our body knows how to arrive us at health. So Honu Nutrition is my practice name. So um, I, get online, um, you can go on Instagram, you can go on my website at honunutrition.com. And then my phone, my email is on there. My first name is Odd and everybody, you guys have seen it, but Hollett at honunutrition.com is my email. And I'm doesn't matter which part of the world I am, this is something that I do. So if you have questions, please, please ask, because I know when you know it, you're going to be a vehicle to pass this to someone else. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got two more minutes, so I get to add a bonus question. Uh, can you just give us your opinion on where we, as, as far as where we are in the state of of the world and technology and artificial intelligence and advertising going crazy and all these things. Where do you see um, our, our body image and our wellness uh, going uh, in the future with all of these considerable technological advances that we have? That's a big question I wanna end with just because we've got, we've got it, but let's see if you can answer it in 60 seconds. I will, so I would actually tell you, if you ask me any other year, I would say I'm a little uncertain. However, with all the craziness that this pandemic has brought in, there is a sense of unique vibration of wanting to do well by itself. I actually, for the first time after a long time, I am more optimistic that we have tools and feel like our barriers are shutting down regardless of where we are and have the confidence of asking and seeking each other. So. I actually see this getting better. I do see in my lifetime a time that we're no longer defined by our sizes, that we have better measurements and it becomes such an open language that all of us can enjoy. But I am a crazy optimist that say with the world going to hell in a handbasket, I think this is the part that is going to have an opportunity for a rebirth. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you everyone so much for joining us for this past hour. Um, Hala, I'm going to connect with you offline because you're so wonderful and I feel like you have so much more to say. We're going to get her back on or have her at least, no, I'm going to, I'm going to advocate for you. We're going to have Hala back on because we've got Thank to you. jump into more of these questions, especially now uh, in these crazy times. So everyone take care of yourselves uh, and we'll see you on the next chat. Bye. Thank you everyone.